In this rough terrain, the mysterious Bigfoot trolley supposedly dwells. Oh. There is no evidence of its real existence. The scientists could explore nothing but these obscure oh. trails on the snow. Awesome! The amazing Bigfoot trolley! The poor things. They must be so cold up there and lonely. I suggest we launch a quest expedition to find the Bigfoot trolley. Call for Sam, Sparky, Arnold, and Fantastic. It's good to have friends around for this mission. Oh. Here the railroad ends up. Look at the map. We are here. From this point on, we will pass through a glacier. After that, we move to the place where the traces were found. But for now, grab your sleeping bags. We are leaving with the dawn. <sighs> Oh, Arnold, you put your sleeping bag the wrong way round. Uh, yeah. Uh, good night to you, too. Uh, uh. Uh, uh. Arnold, don't move away from the track. It's dangerous. You may fall into a crack. You guys, it's fantastic. Yes, you're right. Let's see if an echo is fantastic, too. <gasps> the noise in the mountains can be dangerous. Arnold, don't. Bigfoot trolley! Where are you? <gasps> Avalanche! To the cave, quickly! I just wanted to hear an echo. I didn't know the mountain would split. We're snowed in. We have to go via the cave. <gasps> These drawings prove that the Bigfoot trolleys exist. But where is Arnold? Arnold, where are you? I'm here. Arnold, your new costume suits you so well. Thanks a lot, Vera. I'm the chief of the Bigfoot Trolley Tribe. Of course you are, Arnold. Of course you are. Poor Arnold, he must be hallucinating. The Bigfoot Trolleys, they're very kind fellas. They want me to be their chief. Come with me and I'll introduce you. We shall do exactly what he's asking. Otherwise, it can go much worse than this. <gasps> Arnold, you did it. You found the Bigfoot trolleys. Amazingly, these Bigfoot trolleys turned out to be sociable and friendly. George, they're not wild at all. They're kind and mysterious as well. Not mysterious anymore. Now we know for sure that the Bigfoot trolleys do exist. That's right. And their chief is none other than Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> Hey friends, press to subscribe and watch the new episodes. Oh! Why would a pile of snow just run away like that? Storm warning, everybody! A snowstorm is coming! Snowstorm! Everybody must stay inside of a closed shelter. Until the snowstorm is over, there is a storm warning. Everyone must stay inside of a closed shelter. Oh. Mr. Clockface ran away too. Everyone is misplaced today. 
Let's see if George is at home. Plus, minus, then multiply it by... Oh! Oh, great! Now I got misplaced as well. <laughs> Why did you hang a magnet in your room, George? I'm testing magnetic features. You see, I'm trying to find out what makes people attracted to each other. Take us, we are friends. But why? I would blame it all on magnetic features. This is my research. Do not tell, it's a secret for now. Oh! Uh, why couldn't you investigate soft floors, for example? Yours is painful to fall on. So tell me, what has brought you to my premises? Are we going somewhere? No can do. We have no choice but to stand still, and we can't go out. Haven't you heard that a snowstorm is near? Really? A snowstorm? That's awesome! What's so awesome about a snowstorm? A true friendship, Ethan, shows up at times like this with storms and amazing twisters. Now we're going to test the power of magnetic features. I'm not letting you out. The storm warning announced very clearly that you must not leave your house. George, please stop! So now I'm testing the power of magnetic features. Turn the magnet on full capacity. It won't let the storm take me away. But how can I turn it on? I'm stuck on the ceiling. What happened? Hey guys, the storm took George away. We must get him back quickly. <sighs> but how do we know where to look for him? The storm was huge. He could be buried deep in the snow. <sighs> Georgie! 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 <sighs> Excuse me, I'm Mr. Clockface, not George. Oh heck, I'm buried in deep snow. Huh. Did you see George? Well, he could be anywhere by now. Oh, if George is buried in deep snow, he might freeze. He's not a pig made of iron. Well, I mean, he is made of iron, technically speaking, but he isn't cast iron, if you know what I mean. <laughs> That's true. George is made of iron. George. Here is the power of magnetic features. And of course, the power of true friendship. <laughs> hey, um, hey there, kids. Um, does your magnet transport work only on George? Or could it maybe also... Well, do you think that it could also take me away? What shall I do now? Hey there, Ethan. What are you doing? Well, you see, I'm doing nothing, actually. Well, son, for your information, all the adult trains are out shoveling the railways. You shouldn't waste your time in here. You should go out and do a good deed, son. I just can't. My dad told me to go do a good deed. Can you even believe that? But what is it? I will think of something, and you go and ask George. He's smart. He would know for sure. Hey, George, how are you? What is it?
it that you're doing? I'm conducting an experiment. Well, is it a good deed? Of course it is. Listen to me. Experiments are the vehicle of modern science. Oh, really? Well, if they are, can I help with modern science too with you? What should I do? Watch the indicator. Ethan, huh? Oh, well, you know, I guess that I'm way too young for real science, I'm afraid. Ow! Uh, yeah, Sparky, hello! Any idea what I can do that could count for a good deed? Do you? I know that sport exercises are good for your health. That's why I go skate on a snowboard. Do you want to come with me right now? Yeah, let's go! Hey, watch me! Whoa, it's really cool! So tell me, did you see that? Yeah! But what kind of a deed is it? Hey, dude, what's wrong with you? It's great for your health, and it's also fun. You're just wasting your time. Do me a favor and do something good for a change. Hey, watch me. I want to do a good deed. Hey, Grandpa Billy, what can I do in order not to waste my time? So crawl after me and I will show you. We shall build a snow fortress. A snow fortress? What for? Well, you said that you wanted to do a good deed, didn't you? So go and do it. George, have you seen Ethan by any chance? He was helping me to conduct an experiment. But it didn't turn out so good. But why? Because no train that I have ever seen or learned about could ever travel at the speed of light, I'm sorry to say. Ethan and I were doing sports, and then all of a sudden he left hmm. me to help Grandpa Billy. I heard that his dad told him to do a good deed. Did he find out what to do? Let's go and see. So beautiful. Absolutely awesome. Ethan, did you both actually build this fortress? Well, you could do much, much more than you can imagine if you don't waste your time all day long. Thank you so much, Grandpa Billy. We never had such a great fortress before, and we had nowhere to play. But now all the little trains will be ever so happy. Oh, thank you so very much. Yes, I got it. Oh, yeah? What did you get? I got that a good deed is something that after you do, you'll get a thank you for. <laughs> oh. here long before you two. Guys, no offense, but I ran faster than you did, so I must have been the first. There you go. They scarcely announced the best New Year tree competition till we started arguing. Mm -hmm. All right, maybe it wasn't me who found this tree first after all. And, and not, not us. us. Oh, you are so very kind. Let's assume then that I found it first. <gasps> Uh, 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 I 
hope all of you guys remember that queuing trees in the forest is strictly forbidden. Even on the new year. But where are we supposed to get a tree for the competition? It's time for you to be original and show your creativity. <gasps> Do as you please. I'm going to show my creativity right away. <laughs> my little new year tree. My precious. <laughs> <sighs> Is that good or what? Shall I add a chimney place for the presents? Children, you're all getting awards. Each one of you has created a great New Year tree. But I want to nominate an unexpected winner. Hmm, no. Well, I can't be a winner. It wouldn't be right. I didn't take part in the competition. It is not you. Hmm. Oh. Hey, Vera, didn't we plant this tree here last spring? Uh-huh. Yes, children. This is the very tree that all the kids from our school have planted and cared for. This is it, the one we've all been looking after. The tree you plant with your own hands is always the best. Press the subscribe and watch the new episodes. <sighs> Too bad we're not allowed to participate in the street race. Well, you know that we are just little kids and our parents are worrying about us, that's all. Uh-huh. They themselves can do what they please. Stay up late at night or go for a street race. When I grow up, I will be a super racer. Yee-hoo! <gasps> Give way! <sighs> Who is the super racer here? You are? <laughs> you wouldn't succeed in racing a turtle. No, you wouldn't. I can race you anytime. Wanna <sighs> bet? <laughs> are you scared or what? Coward. <sighs> I'm not a coward. You're on. I'll race you to the end of the street and back. Ha! Ethan, I don't think it's a good idea. Let's go. Whistle <laughs> to start. You are a hooligan. You broke a valuable price. I'm taking you to your parents right away. And I hope they ground you with no movies or games. Uh. Oh. I picked the tastiest engine grease. I Ooh. really hope George likes mm. it. Mm. George! George! Hi there. How are you? What did your parents say? Uh, they say I'm not allowed to go and see my friends. Yet, on the other hand, they said nothing about my friends coming to see me. We decided to cheer you up. Ethan, it is you that I don't want to see. It was you who broke the prize, and I got punished for that. 
I think you should have told them the truth. But... But I would have been punished, and I... I... You guys may come in and help me to do something important. What's going on with you, Ethan? Nothing, really. Now tell me seriously, are you kidding me? I am an old battle iron horse. I see you're sad. You can tell me anything. Uh, I mean, I can maybe help you out. I broke the prize, but George is the one that got punished for that, and I don't know what to do. Well, I would say that if you did something wrong, you are the one responsible. That's right, even if you've done wrong, it is unfair when another guy is charged for your misdeed. Do you get it? <laughs> and no fear, ever, never. That's it. I told you everything. It was me who broke the prize. Forgive George. He's innocent. Hmm. Well done, Ethan. You are very brave. I wouldn't tell if I were you, because I would be scared to death. Listen, just tell my mom and dad to ground me in my room for what I did. We made a new prize. Even better. It's even better. Friends again, Ethan, right, friend? <laughs> yeah. <gasps> Hey, hold on. We can't go any further. Why can't we? Because when a trolley can cut your way, it brings you bad luck, that's why. Whoever crosses this line will get rusty on the spot. I am not superstitious. Therefore, therefore I shall not cross this line. I don't want to get rusty. I... I don't want to get rusty either. But my mom will yell at me if I come home all rusty. Whoever wants to get rusty may go ahead. I am going back home. Coming with me, anybody? <gasps> Hold on. If it goes forward, we are trapped. There'll neither be a way back nor forward. Let's shoo it and scare it away. Shoo! Shoo! It'll run back. That'll help for sure. Yeah, but what if it runs towards us? Hmm, then we shall bait it. I'm the best trolley trainer ever. Watch me. Trolley can, trolley can come here. Good boy. Don't be scared. I'm getting something good. Don't move. I'll catch it when it comes closer. A little closer to me. Shoo! Shoo! Oh, no. Hmm. Well, I've been thinking, what if Sam Sparky won't catch it? Hmm. So I did it. Just look what you've done now. It's gone. We have to chase it in the forest. The Jinx holds its power until the trolley kin is back. All right, we got it. Let's scatter now, one by one, and later meet in our usual place. I mean, the usual place on the road, of course. Oh, where did it go? Oh, I think I'm gonna rest by that pretty stub over there. Ouch! So much for the rest. Hey, Trolleykin! Where are you, Trolleykin? Are you over there? Oh, how amazingly beautiful! The flowers are gorgeous. Oh, and they have five leaves. Just look at that. An old belief says that if you eat up a five-leaf flower, it brings you good luck. Mm. I read that the nettle is not prickly for little trains. And I'm going to check this up right now. Oh, 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 it is prickly. Ouch, it stinks so bad. Ow, ow, ow. This jinx trolleykin, I'll show him. No, you won't get away from the great hunter. I shall put a delicious bait for you right over here. Ouch! <laughs> huh. Hey, you, 
the bad luck vectors? Catching some tan, are you? I'll get you, you jinxes. Great time we had, I'm telling you. Hey, what do you think you're doing over there? Oh, good job. A little train from clay, if may. Looks very natural. <laughs> Take this guy in a cage to the zoo. All righty now. Goodbye now. Achoo. Grandpa Billy, hold on. Tell us, do you believe in omens and jinxes? Well, we, the old trains, don't believe in such stupid things. Neither should you, you young ones, huh? Achoo. Do you really mean that? I've eaten the whole meadow and it was all in vain? And I, did I fall into the swamp for nothing? These stupid beliefs only get us into trouble. I think we should invent some smart beliefs. Oh, what wonderful music. I think it's the passionate. What did you say? The why what, NATO? It's coming from the musician's house over there. Oh, big deal. I could play better than that for sure. To play like that, one has to study hard. Or maybe you think you're a genius. <laughs> oh, yeah, and who says I'm not? Come tomorrow evening and see for yourselves. I'll show you then. Hmm. I have to admit that I'm feeling very awkward with this adornment, my dear. <laughs> oh, don't take offense. It makes you look like a knight with a feather. Oh, he could have broken the instrument. To play the piano properly, you need to learn for a long time. Hey, I will learn. Just give me a minute or two. Hmm. So how about this then? What do you think? Did you like what I just played for you or not? Can you play something military for me? Boom, boom, param, pa pam. Boom, boom, param, pam, pam. Just a minute. Yes, that one. Param param pam. Pam 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 pam. Huh? Huh? Something's happened to our Sam Sparky. What happened? Is it a fire? Huh? Listen, everybody, it's so exciting. We have a young genius in Train City, and his name is Sam Sparky. I think something is wrong here. <gasps> Sam Sparky invited us to convince us all that he's a genius. So we all came. You may come in now. Please, follow me, everyone. <gasps> Whoa. Maestro Sam Sparky is practicing. He asked not to disturb him today. But you may quietly peep inside if you want to. <gasps> Are you convinced now? I really don't get it, guys. When will the performance begin already? Could you put away that bunch of flowers? I can't huh? see anything at all. Huh. Hm. Oh, dear, no. Uh, uh, oh, I'm allergic to flowers. <gasps> Quiet! Silence! Stop sneezing! Don't disturb me listening to this whiz kid play. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> this is outrageous. Honestly, you should clean your nose at home. Ow! Oh! Look at that genius over there! His piano is playing all by itself! 
all I wanted to do was become a good pianist. But this whole learning thing was so hard and... You wanted to become a star without any effort at all? Remember, kid, to achieve something you must study hard and practice for many days and many, many nights. Ta-da! <laughs> the summer is here. Any plans for the holidays? You know I am. Let's create our own TV program. Great idea, Vera. I want to be a broadcaster. Let me try. The weather tomorrow in the train city will be sunny and warm, with frost and ice spots here and there. <laughs> Am I any good? I will be a news reporter. Dear friends, this is a live report from... <laughs> I like to take photographs. I'll be a cameraman. We will shoot special coverages about the interesting events in the train city. And we will name our program the Train City News. Quiet, please. Good afternoon. You're watching the, our, the Train City News. Reporter is online right now. Yeah. Ethan, we're on the air. Dear friends, today we are going to introduce you to a noble and notable train. Hello, Grandpa Billy. Could you please tell the audience about your? What are you doing here, you naughty kids? Get out of here. I'll wash you away with this. Ouch! No, we are from TV! Please forgive me, little guy. It was my bad. I'm happy when guests are coming. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your visit, kiddies. Thank you, too, Grandpa Billy. Wendy? <laughs> oh, man, well... Just you wait. I shall catch you now. Just wait a second. <laughs> We heard that some mysterious theft has taken place here. Indeed. Our dear musician has lost his priceless creative inspiration. It was here in the morning, and then I left for the grocery store, and when I came back, it was gone. Don't you worry. We brought a special sniffer trolley to the crime scene. Trolley can search. <laughs> What a disgrace! I've never seen this inspiration of yours. <laughs> Why are you giving me this suspicious look? <laughs> Unfortunately, our time is up. Wendy, we're back to you. We have a special guest. Uh, could you introduce yourself? What for? Uh, we know each other. This is the right way. Hello, Wendy, then. My name is Arnold. Arnold, did you hear that? Is it time now? Can I read out my own poem? Here goes. The iron rails are shining bright, and Arnold's belly feels quite all right. What a great poem that was, Arnold. And now we have breaking news. The inspiration has been found. It fell behind the music books. Thank you, everyone, especially the trolleykin. <laughs> oh, how touching. <laughs> And now, the Train City Weather Broadcast. The, the weather, weather in the Train City, city is, is totally awesome! Hey friends, press the subscribe and watch the new episodes. Oh, look at that! This tree is probably sick, guys. But, George, how can you know that the tree is sick? It isn't coughing. And it has no fever, either. Trees don't cough. But a midsummer leaf dropping indicates that the tree is not well at all. This is the oldest tree in the train city. It is older than Grandpa Billy himself. Guys, we have to save it. Now let's go to the young gardener store. <sighs> oh! 
something is going on here for sure. Hey, kids, where are you going, all of you? Hey, do you know the tree that is older than Grandpa Billy? Grandpa Billy? Yes, sure. What's wrong with him? Well, he's drying up! Oh, that's terrible. Grandpa Billy is drying up. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Dove, when was the last time you checked your brakes? What brakes indeed? Haven't you heard? Grandpa Billy is drying He's up. He's drying up? All of him? I'm not sure if it's the whole body or half, but it's truly contagious. We need to isolate him before he infects everybody. Right. You run to Grandpa Billy and don't let him out of the house, and I will alarm the citizens immediately. Who's there? Nobody. You are dreaming. Sleep tight now. What do you mean I'm dreaming, huh? Sleep tight, you say? I'm coming out there. Oh, no. Coming out of bed is a bad, bad idea. The weather is nasty today. Why can't I open the door? <laughs> uh, because I'm holding it. Don't panic. We will take you to the hospital soon, Grandpa Billy. That's it. We will visit the tree every day until it is well again. Let's go and ask Grandpa Billy to give us some flowers to plant here around the tree. Kids, run away! Grandpa Billy is out! Huh? Have you seen Mrs. Dove, any of you? Oh, great. You know, you kids are doing well, very well. Thank you, Grandpa Billy. Could you please give us some flowers to plant around the tree? I love the idea. Wait here. I'll bring you flowers as soon as I can. Grandpa Billy, wait. I'll help you. Mr. Police Puff is asking you why you are not at school. What on earth are you talking about? I'm asking, have you seen an infected patient around? Why on earth are you covered with engine grease? Oh, because grease protects from infection. Hey, Vera, Wendy, just look at the flowers Grandpa Billy gave us. Grandpa Billy, now don't fight back. Well, this spread protective grease all over you, and you'll be just fine. I'm perfectly fine without any grease at all, you know. And tell me, dear Mrs. Elf, please explain. Why did you lock me inside my own house when you came by before, huh? Can you tell me that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what a hilarious story. It was all my mistake. Yes. <laughs> we are sorry, Grandpa Billy. Ah, uh, never mind. We all make mistakes, you know. Mm -hmm. But look, the kids are doing a great job over there, huh? Isn't that sweet, huh? Look. Ethan, why aren't you going to play outside? Mom, am I beautiful? Ethan, you are the most beautiful little train to me, my darling. I'm beautiful to you because you're my mom. But what about the others? Ethan, outer beauty is not the only thing that matters. Good deeds matter. Politeness, kindness, and honesty. You need them to be beautiful, my love. Is that it? I'll go and do something good to become the most beautiful little train in the whole city. What? <sighs> it's beautiful, huh? Oh, Ethan, you scared me. I think its beauty is stunning. What, more than mine, you mean? Ethan, you're kidding me. You can't possibly compare yourself with this microscope here. What microscope, George? Ethan, are you sure that one good deed is enough to become beautiful? You might need two good deeds for the whole body to be beautiful. One should be enough to get beautiful eyes. Hello, Mrs. Dove. Can we help you to get to your wagon home, please? Oh, thank you, boys. Thank you. You are so very nice. You see, George? We are nice before we actually did something. Can you imagine mm. our stunning beauty after we do good deeds? Oh, the wagon is so heavy. <sighs> hey, look at me. Am I now more beautiful than before? I think that your left eye got a bit wider. Oh, then 
a wagon is not enough to make me beautiful. Mrs. Dove, can we please clean up your house? Ooh! I completely forgot about being polite, honest, and kind. I just wanted to say, Mrs. Dove, thank you very much for everything. Thank you so much for letting us clean your floor, Mrs. Dove. Thank you very much, boys. I appreciate it. All the best to you, Mrs. Dove. And bon appetit. <laughs> and good night to you. Oh. <gasps> All right, the good deeds are done, and we've been polite. Honesty is left. It's one serious trail. Can we clean a floor again instead? Okay, then. I broke a glass, I was late for school, I didn't brush my teeth, I haven't done my homework, I didn't listen to my mom. And I forgot to clean my room and... Well, okay, it's time for my turn now. Back in the time when I was a little train, I was late for class once. <laughs> All right, then. I guess now it's time for kindness. And then, George, beauty will be ours. Whoa! Oh! Guys, I'm sorry. It was an accident, I swear. Oh, Arnold, you're such a... Great guy, Arnold. Mm -hmm. You hit me just a little bit, and my bruise is so small. Are you hurt at all, Arnold? Hey, sorry, guys. I'd better be going. <sighs> Hello, kids. Well, then, isn't it a lovely day today, eh? Hello, General. Uh, can you tell us something? We've been kind, honest, and polite from the beginning of the day to the end of it. When shall we become more beautiful? It's very good to be honest, polite, and kind, that's for sure, of course, dear boys. But one day is not enough to become beautiful. You need to be like this forever, every day for the rest of your lives. Boom, 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 boom. Oh. Uh. Oh, Ethan, as a matter of fact, I think your other eye got wider, too. <laughs> Oh, what wonderful music. I think it's the passionate. What did you say? The why what NATO? It's coming from the musician's house over there. Oh, big deal. I could play better than that for sure. To play like that, one has to study hard. Or maybe you think you're a genius. <laughs> oh, yeah, and who says I'm not? Come tomorrow evening and see for yourselves. I'll show you then. I have to admit that I'm feeling very awkward with this adornment, my dear. <laughs> oh, don't take offense. It makes you look like a knight with a feather. Oh, you could have broken the instrument. To play the piano properly, you need to learn for a long time. Hey, I will learn. Just give me a minute or two. So how about this then? What do you think? Did you like what I just played for you or not? Can you play something military for me? Boom, boom, param, pa pam. Boom, boom, param, pam, pam. Just a minute. Yes, that one. Param, param, pam. Boom, 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 boom. Something's happened to our Sam Sparky. What happened? Is it a fire? Huh? Listen, everybody. It's so exciting. We have a young genius in Train City, and his name is Sam Sparky. I think something is wrong here. <gasps> Sam Sparky invited us to convince us all that he's a genius. So we all came. You may come in now. Please, follow me, everyone. <gasps> Whoa. Maestro Sam Sparky is practicing. He asked not to disturb him today. But you may quietly peep inside if you want to. <gasps> Are 
you convinced now? I really don't get it, guys. When will the performance begin already? Could you put away that bunch of flowers? I can't huh? see anything at all. Huh. Hm. Oh, dear, no. Uh, uh, oh, I'm allergic to flowers. Uh, <gasps> Quiet! Silence! Stop sneezing! Don't disturb me listening to this whiz kid play. Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> this is outrageous! Honestly, you should clean your nose at home. over there. His piano is playing all by itself. All I wanted to do was become a good pianist. But this whole learning thing was so hard and... You wanted to become a star without any effort at all? Remember, kid, to achieve something you must study hard and practice for many days and many, many nights. Hey, Captain, are you going to come off of watch now? It's time to sleep now. In this severe storm, I cannot bring myself to leave the command bridge. What if anybody is in distress, Mom? But you're so sleepy, dear. Your cruiser might hit a sea cliff. So now it's time for you to go to bed. Hmm. Mom, it's not a cruiser, it's a freaky. Help! We are attacked by pirates! Mommy! Mommy! They've been attacked by pirates! Boatsman! Oh, 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 oh! Boatsman! Reporting is ordered! Why are you hiccuping? Well, I, uh, oh, oh! I've got seasickness! Seasickness? How could you? You're the chief boatsman! You know you should really look after your captain! Interesting. Where are all the sails? You ordered to wash them, Captain, remember? They haven't dried since yesterday. A ship! Ahoy! <laughs> all hands on deck! Let's get ready to attack, everybody! Board them! Hey, look! Pirates! Whoa! I think they've spotted us. So what are we doing now? If we don't look at them and ignore them, they'll simply pass by us. The frigate disappeared! It was a ghost ship! Okay, listen up. We'll sneak to the pirate ship and save all the hostages. What if they see us? Pirates sleep just like babies. Just don't make any noise. Who's there? We are the little mermaids. Hmm. them and this is to 
stop the pirates from kidnapping people. Never mind! Outrageous! You will pay me for everything! And I will report you, you hear me? Oh, Captain, you have saved me! You are so amazingly brave! George, have you been sleeping by the table all night long? You woke me up! Ah, all my dreams seem to end with a cliffhanger, yet a tiny piece of the story is still on. Let's tell each other about our future dreams when we grow up. You start, Vera. What do you want to be? I'll become an emergency doctor. Just imagine this. Ethan catches a cold, and I tell him, you should breathe in, and now you should breathe out. Huh? Um... Is this Dr. Breeze in, breeze out? Breathe in, breathe out. Where's the patient? Here you are. Now breathe in, breathe out. What's your problem? Open your mouth, ah. say ah. Say ah. ah. Very good. Breathe in, breathe out. Dear sir, your nose is running severely. We will give you the best medicine. Breeze in, breeze out, you're quite a doctor. And what is your dream, George? I will be a famous scientist who makes a really great discovery. Just imagine this, guys. As you can see with the simplest equation right here, we shall conduct this experiment. But there is just one question. <gasps> Please note how successfully this object splits into two. <clears throat> Thereby, dear colleagues, we may put this matter to rest. My lecture is over. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very cheerful lecture. And what about you, Ethan? And I, I want to be an illusionist and a hypnotizer. Imagine this. Abracadabra. Abracadabra. <laughs> And now, Abracadabra! Oh! <laughs> hey, where am I? You are sleeping. I don't feel like sleeping, but I am hungry. Your eyelids are heavy. You are falling into a deep sleep. On the count of three, you'll be sleeping soundly. One, two, three. What kind of hypnotizer would fall asleep in his own performance? Oh, why can't we make ourselves useful even in our own dreams? Hey, kids, why are you so sad? We told each other our dreams of what we would become when we grow up. And then in the dreams, everything went wrong for us. It's because we're good for nothing, right? Don't feel bad, guys. When I was a kid, my music would scare away all of the trolleykins in town. <laughs> Then I studied hard, and eventually I made it. I think I will start with going back home and doing my school homework for today. Oh no, Arnold is late again. Oh, hi guys. The 
this is not my fault. My watch was slow. Oh, was it really? Hmm. Listen, kids, I'll tell you a fairy tale story. Once upon a time, there was a very respectable sultan. He had a beloved daughter, a fair princess named Ding Dong. Now, in his castle, there was a clock with the finest mechanism in the world. Therefore, in his castle, nobody was ever late and they lived happily. And the clock of his neighbor, Sultan, was very, very slow. So everybody in that castle, well, they were always running late for everything. And their life was a complete misery. Now, one day, our Sultan decided to take a vacation to go visit the sea. Dear daughter, while I'm on vacation, make sure nobody steals the clockwork by accident. Don't you worry about that, Daddy. Everything is gonna be fine. Did you pack your tanning cream, Daddy? The neighbor Sultan heard that the princess was home all alone, and he decided right then and there that he was going to steal the clock. Now that night was very, very dark. Oh, what's gonna happen now? How could you do that? Uh, now we need to go ask Genie for help. I think we need to rub it here. Your wish is my command! I am the slave of the lamp. Oh, hello, old man. A terrible thing happened, and I don't know what to do. Our finest clock has been stolen. It was your neighbor, and you know that she was envious of you. Our neighbor? Can we chase him down? Oh, this fly again at, at my age. Tell me, is the weather good for flying? <laughs> That's it, we're done. Not going any farther now. My good chimney is broken, A broken. good chimney? What's good about it? It's all rusty. I'll tell my dad, and he will jam you in with the cork. Well, I'm not afraid of you at all. Abracadabra. Oh, those genies. Never mind, we're almost there. What a dirty place. Why? Why don't you work? And why is my castle still so dirty? Shame on you. You're a sultan. <sighs> you should clean your castle instead of stealing other people's clocks. Fair princess, may I have the pleasure to offer you my comfortable flying carpet for a ride? Oh, oh my Prince Charming. I didn't keep my eye on the clock and it was stolen, but we got it back and from now on we will live happily ever after. The clock has nothing to do with it, sweetie. You don't need the finest clockwork to be punctual and true to your word. And it's far more important to be considerate and diligent, my lovely little daughter. Do you understand? Yes, I do. I do. I understand. <laughs> and they all lived happily ever after. I Ugh. think I understand it, too. Huh. I will never be late again as long as I live. What a great present you've got, George. You're so lucky. Yeah, I love it too, Ethan. It's been a long time since I got a present. Oh, look up! Everybody, look at me! Look at my red balloon! What a beautiful balloon Ethan got! <laughs> yeah, very beautiful. <sighs> I think everybody saw my balloon, and everybody liked it. You know, I've been thinking, why do you think this balloon is yours? Maybe somebody's lost it. You have to give it back, then. Excuse me, did you lose a balloon by any chance? Oh, no. 
Ethan, we thought it was yours. Well, I thought so too, actually. But what if it was lost and I found it by accident, you know? Have you lost this, maybe? We've been through the whole town, asking everyone. But what if it came here from another town? What if someone there is looking for it and crying bitterly? We have to go there and find out. You can go there if you want to. Hi, sweetie. You know, I had a surprise for you, but it's gone. I'm so sorry. Let me guess. You bought a red balloon, and it flew away. But how did you know that? Did you find it? <gasps> don't lose it. Don't lose it. Oh, please, just don't lose it. Uh, it was my mom who lost the balloon. She wanted to give me a present. Where is it now? Huh? It caught on a tree, then it came off and flew away. I looked for it everywhere, but it was gone. I told you in the first place it was mine. I'm sorry. Well, you've got your present, and I don't. All because of you. Ethan, wait a second. <sighs> Maybe just one day it'll come back. Ethan, don't cry. These are all for you. Do you like them? Yes, they're great. But you need to make up with George. You can have many balloons, but only one true friend. Now go and talk to him. Well, it was an accident. I didn't know. And now I lost my best friend. You didn't. Huh? Hey there. You can choose any balloon you like, George. Wow, wow. Are they all yours? Ours. <laughs> Hey friends, press the subscribe and watch the new episodes.